Hi everyone, I'm back with another photography video and today I want to talk about this guy, the Fujifilm X-T10. This is actually an incredible little camera. Uh, I've always been with Nikon. Um, I bought my first Nikon 40 years ago. Did I just say 40 years? Yeah, 40 years. Good God. Anyway, bought my first Nikon 40 odd years ago and I still have my trusty Nikon F3 which was the king back in the 80s beautiful beautiful camera but you know as cameras have changed and um, the dials have been replaced with menus and so on although they can do wonderful things it wasn't really something that I enjoyed I do like the Nikons I like the way that they work I like the, the way that they everything is accessible very easily and I still think that uh, the DSLRs although I've never never had a Canon but I do think that the DSLRs really still lead the way in that respect or they have done until recently uh, as you may know if you've seen my other videos I did try to change to the Sony system image quality is fantastic I just did not like the menu system I just I just found it so fiddly it was just annoying and that's why I decided to step to the XT1 and 2 I love the retro I love the dials I love the way that I can actually actually enjoy my photography and as I said before there's one other reason where for me as an everyday camera this trumps the Nikon and that is the image quality the colors straight out of camera uh, with the Nikon you don't have many options you just have monochrome portrait vivid and that's it really you end up shooting everything raw and if you're out just shooting for fun whatever it may be you go home you have a few hundred shots you've got to sit and mess about with all of them or you literally shoot in JPEG and they're a compromise because they're not really how you would like them whereas with the Fuji I can shoot raw and fine but I can set a film effect Velvia Astia it's just absolutely wonderful and now 90 odd percent of my photos I'm happy with straight out of camera as well as the fact that when I'm using the camera I'm able to make adjustments as as and when I like the old-fashioned way with a dial for my speeds a dial for my ISO a dial for my settings which is just the way I like it I don't have to be reaching into menus every five minutes I did th think I'd try something smaller <clears throat> this is 95% of what the XT1 is and what's missing is not really what I would miss most of the time uh, I wouldn't like to use this with a big lens um, but again, as you may know from my previous videos, my favourite go-to lens when I'm on walkabout is my Samyang 12mm f2. I just think it's perfect because I am able to capture everything I want and it just seems to give drama to everything I photograph. That's about the largest lens that I'll use. I only use primes. I might use the 18-55, uh, uh, but that's not really a very big lens, but I wouldn't use the 16 to 55 That would just be too big especially for this camera on here at the moment I've got the seven artisans 25 millimeter f 1.8, which is quite an interesting lens I I've tried this one and the 35 millimeter f 1.2 there for what they cost They're nice. They're interesting Gives another perspective to photography, but this is quite good for video if you can actually preset the autofocus and leave it It's not too bad now, I feel that this is actually fantastic value even now. In fact, it's better value now than it was a year or two ago because of the price you can get them for. This actually is, doesn't really cost much more than the Nikon V1, which I also like as a walkabout camera, but it doesn't have, it's years old. It doesn't have anywhere near the features that this has. More importantly, it doesn't have a flash. Um, it has a proprietary shoe you have to buy the special Nikon flash which is ridiculously expensive just for that camera 
which I didn't buy. Um, this is absolutely fantastic. Now, one of the most common gripes I hear from Fuji users is the 2.5 millimeter microphone port. Well, that is not really a problem. The only problem I would say is that Rode don't make one of these. You can get one of these online, 3.5, 2.5. You can use this with your Rode mic instead of the red normal microphone that comes with Rode. Although I'm surprised that Rode have not, have not uh, supplied or made available a 3.5 to 2.5 video considering how many Fujis are in circulation. Um, I'm not sure why they went for 2.5. That solves this. Doesn't solve the lavalier side of things. I do have an adapter, but I don't really use a lavalier into the camera that often. If I'm going to use anything, I'll use the sound separately anyway. So it doesn't really matter so much. But yes, it would have been better if it were 3.5. But for the main part, with your run and gun, if you're using the Rode shotgun mic, you can get one of these online for a fiver on Amazon, eBay, and that does the job and you're sorted. Aside from that, image quality on this is very, very good. The X-T10 is 16 megapixels, it's not 24 like the uh, X-T20, and the X-T30 I believe is 26. The key is, as I've said with the D7000, which I'm filming this on, are you upgrading just for the sake of upgrading? Which is why I would always urge you to challenge yourself with an old camera challenge, depending what system you're on. If you're a Nikon user, go and get yourself a, a, a D70S body or something like that that's six, eight megapixels and put a good lens on it and go out and use your skills several years later than when you first had a camera like that. And you will see the photos and you will see that they're actually very good. Um, just because something better has come along or something that offers more features does not mean that what you already have is not good. We need to get this camera whore mentality out of our heads. Um, I've changed for the sake, for the reasons that I've said, I wanted a retro camera. Absolutely love this camera. Really, really good for, for what I need. Video. <clears throat> The only feature that I would like would be a slightly longer length. One thing that I have found with the Fujis is that on camera, when you go to take a video, um, it's in full HD. It gives you a 15 minute time limit. When you start the video record via the remote app, it gives you 20 minutes. I would have liked it to be 30. Um, at least that way you have plenty of time. You don't really need any more than that, really. Who is actually going to leave a camera running for more than 30 minutes in one scene, one shot? If it's a wedding video, a property video, it is literally clips of one or two or three minutes at the most. Even if it's an interview, um, a, a chat situation, if you go beyond 10 or 15 minutes, nobody will watch it anyway. So, and by that time you would want a break. So I really don't see that it's a problem. Uh, everything else for me is fine. I don't really need to be making videos in, in 4K because you really don't need to be subjected to even greater clarity when you're looking at my face online. I think that HT is fine. Uh, one of the funniest things I hear on YouTube is when people who do reviews uh, are so adamant that they have to film in 4K to future-proof their videos. Yep, because in 15 years time, people are really, really going to want to watch a review of a Samsung Galaxy S10 or a Nikon D7200 or whatever it is. Really doesn't matter. Um, you're not making an epic movie. Um, you may consider yourself to be a, a, a fancy film director. 4K is good because of the scope that it gives you. You can crop, change, you know, change uh, perspective and so on. Um, but for general YouTube videos, full HD is fine. 
the later ones the xt2 onwards have 4k anyway as for the rest um all the bells and whistles do you really need it do you need to be using flog and an external recorder to make a video of a review i don't think so as for my photography uh, from the 7170-200 going to the X-T1 initially, I went down from 24 pixels to 16. But actually, my photos most of the time were better because I was enjoying what I was doing much more. I had wonderful film effects. I experimented more when I'm out and about. Um, I love the Velvia. I love all the film effects and i'm finding that i'm really enjoying my photography and as for this this can go places where other cameras would not go because as many as you know if you have a dslr and a 2.8 lens on it it starts to get pretty heavy whereas if you have one of these and a couple of prime lenses um all the standard standard zoom the fuji standard zoom which is probably the best standard zoom out there at the moment um you have to pay significantly more for only slightly more performance is it worth it not for me plus the 18 to 55 has uh, image stabilization anyway which is a great feature so i tend to stick with primes and i'm enjoying my photography so if you're actually thinking what do you need i think an xt10 is very good the xt20s are becoming much better value is it worth paying a thousand fifteen hundred pounds to go and get an xt3 xt4 that's coming out soon do you really need it or is it just something that you want but if you want to have a tool to take very good photos anywhere without the cumbersome weight the xt10 is wonderful uh, and the xt20 xt2 even better still um, and as the prices are coming down, they're becoming better value. But for me, I wouldn't be prepared to pay the cost of upgrading to a brand new X-T4 and paying 15, 1600 pounds um, and taking a hit of what, a thousand pounds in a year for what? For a few features that I'm just going to show that I have, but probably never use. So please feel free to share your thoughts with me. Um, no point me showing you photos. You, there's plenty of those online. You know what these cameras can do. You know the specs. I'm just talking about the usability and why I like these cameras and why I uh, why I changed the Fuji system. All right. See you on the next video. Bye.